Hello, my sweet friends. Um, this video, <laughs> this opinion video, can I just start by saying, my gosh, the struggles to get this video uploaded, but also the number of times I've re-recorded thinking that, I don't know, the recording itself was the problem. I've lost count of how many times it's taken to make this video at this point. So hopefully this is the one that actually gets uploaded and that you're actually able to view because I, I don't know if I've jinxed myself along the way somehow and just made YouTube and any recording I've made work against me, but man, oh man, something's been going on and now I have something in my eye. Oh, for goodness sake. You guys, I'm falling apart over here. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, um, I would like to start out the gate by reiterating from the announcement that I put in Google Classroom that because it's taken so long with all the technical difficulties I've been having just to get the explanation video for the opinion essay uploaded, out of fairness, I'm going to truly, I know I'm not supposed to be touching my eye, but something's in my eye. <sighs> you guys, <laughs> oh, I miss you guys so much. Okay, we're just gonna, just gonna power through. Um, so I have extended the due date to Monday. Um, Monday the 27th. Originally, this was supposed to be due on Friday. If you're already done with it or if you're able to get it done on Friday and want to drop it off with your other work, cool. Go for it. But I'm going to extend this out because I want to honor the fact that some people really um, just feel more comfortable after having had an informational video to go along with an assignment that they're doing. And I want to honor that. And I just want to apologize again. I don't know why there's been so much trouble getting my videos uploaded. And like I said, I've re-recorded this so many times I've lost track. But let's hope, what, maybe video six at this point is the one that actually goes through. So if you happen to be watching this one right now, then hooray, that means it actually worked on this one. Um, we're going to talk, like I said, about the opinion essay. For this, you had to read about Daylight Savings Time in your StoryWorks magazine. Now, Daylight Savings Time is that super fun thing we do in the spring, early spring, where we, we, um, we spring ahead. That's probably what you might recognize the whole Daylight Savings Time concept to because a lot of times it's nicknamed as spring ahead because um, we jump ahead an hour, okay? And sure, we wind up... Well, it feels like we lose an hour of sleep that night where the difference happens. And then sometimes throughout the week, I remember students would sometimes say, oh, I just feel kind of groggy because you kind of feel on a slightly different sleep schedule because everything feels shifted an hour that first week. Is this sounding familiar? Um, but the cool thing is our days wind up getting longer. So it's like we are saving the amount of daylight we get to have. Now, um... I would like you, I mean, unless you don't actually have it in front of you and watching this and then you're going to go back and do it cool. If you have the bag in front of you, open up to where it says before you write, okay? It says before you write, you need to pick what side of the argument you are on. You, It's really hard to write an opinion essay when you don't know what your opinion is, right? It's kind of hard to write about anything when you're unsure of what you're writing about. So you need to staple down within yourself if you want to go with yes don't mess with our snooze time we um we should get rid of daylight savings time or no we need more sunshine do not get rid of daylight savings time you need to pick one now i understand some of you might find that you kind of agree with both. You're kind of waffling back and forth. You're like, you know what? I see your, the argument for getting rid of it and I see the argument for keeping it. I totally understand. But for this, you have to pick one, okay? So sit with it, decide <clears throat> what you would probably best be able to write an opinion essay on. Which side do you feel that you're leaning more towards? And then use that to do your essay with, okay? Some of you might not even have that issue. Some of you are probably like, nope. We need to get rid of daylight savings time. Um, and other of you are probably like, we totally need to keep daylight savings time. Some of you might know. Some of you might be stuck. Okay? So sit with it and decide what your opinion is going to be. You need to do that before you start writing the essay. You just have to. Okay? Um, 
Paragraph one is technically the introduction because at the beginning of every essay, you need to have an introduction. We have been over this before, right? Um, now the introduction is kind of segmented into three parts. Now it's really prompted out for you nicely. So if you are reading all of the words on the page for each portion of this essay, it will help guide you and it'll help be less stressful for you. It really just kind of helps remind you of different pointers of, hey, this is what I should mention now, this is what I should mention now, this is what I should mention now. It's a nice little skeletal guideline for you, okay? And I picked this outline because I knew that we weren't going to be in school together for me to do all that frequent conferencing with you regarding it. So I think the prompting might help. Please follow along to it and like read the prompts to help you, okay? Um, I, however, right now I'm going to give you a little extra prompting like I would if we were in class together. So remember how we would always talk about hooks and how when you're writing an essay and you are beginning your essay with the introduction and right out the gate, the first thing you're going to do is something called a hook. It's like you are the writer's version of a fisherman, okay? You want to literally hook your reader audience into wanting to read more of your essay, into feeling invested enough to read more of your essay. And you're going to do that a certain way. You, however, get to pick. It's usually broken up into three different ways that we would always discuss in class. Your hook to get readers interested can either be by making a statement, asking a question, or setting the scene, okay? Now, what do I mean by each one of those? Well, I'll go back and tell you. If you wanna make a statement as your hook, okay, you can do it by something like this. It doesn't have to be exactly this. This is just an example. First of all, I'm just going to pretend that I am in favor of saving daylight savings time and keeping it because we need more sunshine. So in my pretend essay world, that's the side I'm going with, just so you know. And I'm also not saying that because I'm trying to influence you to also write your essays about that. Please go with whatever it is you want, okay? So making a statement could be something like, gosh, isn't it the best when you get to hang outside with your neighborhood friends in the summer until like 8.45 and it isn't even dark yet, right? That's a fun statement. Hey, isn't it cool to be able to, whatever? Asking a question. That's another way you could get a hook. Here's an example. Um, have you ever longed for those moments in the year when the days stretch out longer and you can hang on your front porch and the sun doesn't set until like nine o'clock at night in the summertime? Um, setting the scene it's like you get to be a poet a little bit. You get to use a lot of descriptive imagery. So something like this. Picture it. Birds are chirping. The kids next door are having a little basketball tournament with each other. You hear the ding-a-ling of a bike bell as kids go riding by. You hear the jumping of a scooter from your friend across the street. You look at your clock and it's 8.45 at night but the sun still won't set for another couple more minutes. That could be setting the scene. Any of these three examples, whether you made a statement right out the gate, whether you asked a question right out the gate or set the scene right out the gate, you were saying things to kind of make the reader go, huh, and connect in a way to make them feel interested and invested to read more of your essay, all right? You don't have to use any of what I just did as, as your example. I'm just saying when we would talk about hooks in class, we would come up with hooks that either made a statement, that asked a question, or set the scene in some way. And then after you did that hook, whichever one you chose to do, you would then slide into the next part that has prompted you saying, write a sentence or two explaining what this debate is about. You want your reader to know what the essay is going to be about. But remember, we are not going to say things like, in this essay, you will learn about, or in my essay, you will read about. No, there's nothing wrong with that per se, but that's not the type of writing that we are challenging ourselves to do. Remember, we didn't do that with the other essay in class. Please don't do that here. They know that they're going to be reading about something because they're reading it in the moment. All right. So 
write a sentence or two explaining what the debate is about. Well, the debate is about a focus on daylight savings time. So you're going to want to write a sentence or two about the fact that there is this debate going on throughout the country as to whether or not we should be keeping daylight savings time or whether we should be getting rid of daylight savings time. And then that will slip you right into that final sentence, that final thing you're going to say in your introduction, which prompts you right here. It says, write a sentence that clearly states your opinion. This is where you let your reader know what side of the argument you fall on, okay? Which opinion you have. Whether we should get rid of daylight savings time or whether we should save daylight savings time. This is where you're going to state that. You're not going to go all about the reasons why you feel like that, though, because that comes in the body paragraphs, but you need to state what side you are on so your reader knows, okay? So remember, don't go into a detailed explanation about why yet that's coming, okay? So that's the introduction paragraph. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, hopefully not stress depressed, lemon zest, but if you're feeling stressed, lemon zest, please get a hold of me and we will work through this, okay? Sound good? Um, now it says, paragraphs two, three, four. These are the first body paragraphs. Um, there's another body paragraph coming on the next page. Or, well, excuse me, two pages after this. But we're just going to focus on the first three body paragraphs. Okay? Now, if you are reading all of these cool things called words that are printed across the top of the page, they detail for you what it expects you to write about. So, you would have re read, you've already started this part. Your three reasons should be listed in either the yes or the no column on page 27. Okay? Remember how you had to decide what side of the argument you want to be on? Well, that's where this all comes into play. Remember how you told your reader what side of the argument you were on in your introduction? Well, this is where you get to describe, my friends. In each paragraph, in paragraph two, the first body paragraph, paragraph three, the second body paragraph, and paragraph four, the third body paragraph, you are going to pick a reason that you are going to focus your argument around for each paragraph. Now, what I mean by that is there must be a reason that you have chosen either, yep, we should keep daylight savings times or no, we should not keep daylight savings time. There's got to be reasons that you came to the conclusion that you did in order to write this whole essay. So you need to come up with three supporting reasons, okay? Not enough to just have one reason. Got to come up with three because you're really trying to convince somebody, right? That's really the point of this whole thing. It's not just share your opinion, but also low-key, you maybe want a reader to kind of see things on your side. So you read an article about Daylight Savings Time and StoryWorks, all right. And so perhaps as you were reading, there were three specific reasons that popped out to you like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea to keep this or nope, we should get rid of it. All right. But here's the thing. Maybe you learned a couple of cool reasons from the StoryWorks magazine, but maybe you also have like an encyclopedia at home um, or like you were surfing the Internet because you just got really interested in learning about daylight savings time and you wanted to learn more. And then you learned other cool things that you feel like you could also use as reasons in your essay or like maybe you didn't, but like pretend that you did. You can include those, too, because it says right here after the topic sentence for each paragraph where you then state your reasons. Add evidence to support each reason. You'd facts and details from the article, plus any other examples you can think of from other evidence. So that's my point. Like, say you were interested in this, but then you were also checking out, like, a family encyclopedia. You were browsing online. You found other cool reasons that you feel you could insert into your essay to really support your opinion and the side of the argument you're on. Do that. That's fine. That's totally fine. If you don't have an encyclopedia you were looking through if you weren't also like wanting to learn extra about daylight savings time, that's also fine. You have plenty of um, pieces of evidence you can pull from the reading that you did in here. That's fine. I'm just saying for those friends who are like, oh, but I also know that this, this other piece of information about daylight savings time, but I read it somewhere else. Cool. Go for it. Include that. That's great. Okay. I ask you that you at least share with me where you found that information though. Do you think you can do that? Awesome. So 
for these three body paragraphs, you're going to come up with a topic sentence stating your reason why. Okay, so um, first reason why I feel like we should save, uh, keep daylight savings time is because blah, blah, blah. But remember, it's not enough to just say that. You then need to explain yourself. Remember how in class, if I'm ever able to say why, it means you haven't explained yourself. All right? With multiple sentences. <laughs> we never just put a paragraph together, a body paragraph together, with anything less than like five sentences. Okay? Your body paragraphs should have at least like four to five sentences. Okay? Keep that in mind. So those are your first three body paragraphs. Then you come up with another another reason why I feel like we should save daily saving time is because blah, 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 blah. And then you explain. And then again, oh my gosh, but this next one, you guys, I'm so, so, so excited about this. Look on this back page right here. It says, paragraph five, mention the other side. This is your fourth body paragraph. And it says, mention the other side. Some of you might be going, why am I mentioning the other side? I've already picked what side I'm on. Oh my gosh, you guys. Remember how we were talking about perspective in class? that word perspective, and being able to see things from another point of view. If you're trying to make an argument about something, not to argue, remember making an argument is just explaining your stance on something and really trying to be detailed and explain to another person why you feel a certain way. Sometimes a way to give a really strong argument is to also think about how the other side might view how you feel and using that as a way to maybe get them to take the other side of what they're thinking. And what I mean by that is, and once again, we're just going to pretend that I'm writing this essay and that my stance is, no, we should totally keep daylight savings time because I like extra hours of sunlight. Let's pretend that that's the side I've chosen and that's my pretend essay that I'm doing. I need to put my brain for a second for this paragraph in the body of someone who does not share that opinion. And I need to think up an argument that they might make for their side and use that to my benefit. So I actually wanna bring up an opposing argument, but then find a way to spin it to then get them to see my side. So here's my example, are you ready? Because it says, think about a point that someone on the other side of the debate might make. Start this paragraph by mentioning the other side, then explain why you disagree with it. Here's my example. Some of you might feel that we should get rid of daylight savings time because you lose an hour of sleep and that just messes up your sleep schedule. Well, consider this. Sure, you might lose an hour of sleep last night and you might have a funky sleep pattern for the next couple of days, but imagine the benefits. After you get past that week, your sleep schedule goes back to normal and your body starts to adjust and you start to then get to have longer days where you can do activities that you enjoy outside with your friends and you feel like your day isn't super rushed because you don't get home from school and only have an hour left of light outside to be able to play. You have multiple hours of which to do things besides just homework. You can hang with your neighbor friends. So isn't it worth it to maybe just spend a couple of days feeling kind of tired because in the grand scheme of things, you get more time to do activities? That's just what I, like, that's just me spitballing there. But my point is I thought of an argument that the other side might have. And oftentimes you will hear people say, well, we lose an hour of sleep. It makes us feel groggy. It feels weird for that week in school. Some of you are probably remembering this all too well because it's true when we do those change of the clocks, we kind of show up that next day going, I lost an hour. Oh, it's because we lost an hour, but I lost an hour of sleep. It kind of makes us feel a little weird. But after identifying that that's an argument someone might make, be like, yeah, sure. You know what? It, it is kind of meh to lose an hour of sleep one day and then to kind of feel like your sleep schedule is interrupted for a few days. But think about it, don't you wind up getting past that? Yeah, you do. So I took an argument from the other side and then I spun it, okay? And that's what you are going to do for that final body paragraph. You need to think of an argument someone else might make on the opposite opinion that you have, okay? And then you try to use that to your benefit to then try to turn it in a positive way to then maybe help them see your side. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. It's always important. And also just even opinion essays aside, just in life, life hack, 
it's sometimes really helpful for you to be able to see things from someone else's perspective and someone else's point of view. It helps you kind of understand other people a little better, right? And also then can help you converse with people better because you can then display to them, hey, guess what? I can totally see your side too. But here's also a reason why I'm articulating my side. It's just helpful stuff for life. Finally, we have our conclusion. Just like we always have to start an essay with an introduction, we have to end with a conclusion, okay? We've talked about this in class. You don't go to a movie and get so invested in a movie and then want to see how something finishes, but then like the last 20 minutes have been chopped off, the lights go off on in the movie theater, and I was like, all right, movie's over. And then you're sitting there going, excuse me, what? <laughs> how, how does this end? I need this piece together. I need like a beautiful little bow wrapped on top of this present. Like I need to feel like everything has been resolved. You can't just end an essay without a conclusion. <laughs> you can't do it. It leaves your readers going, huh? What? What? Is that, was that the end? There's no final statements here. You need to have a conclusion. So we practiced some beautiful conclusions in class together when we would do um, like those exercises where we would come up with um, all the different parts of an essay and we kind of pieced together almost a whole class essay and you guys would um, give feedback to what we should include and like I would type it and then it would show up on the smart board. But really it was you guys coming up with everything. I know that you can do this. So paragraph six is the conclusion. And it says, if you were to read everything, the last paragraph of your essay is the conclusion. You should write a few sentences restating your main points. Does that say to rephrase the entire essay? No, you just want to restate in a way to like remind your readers of the main points that you made supporting your side of the argument, supporting your opinion, okay? Don't add any new ideas. Sometimes it's very tempting when you're finishing up something to be like, oh, and another thing, even though I didn't include it earlier, but I'm thinking of it now. Don't do that. Because <laughs> then you're going to make your reader go, wait a minute, did I read about that? No, just remind your reader of the main points that you already made without adding anything new, as tempting as it might be. Remember, this is the last thing your readers will see. You want to make sure to remind them that you have shown them that your opinion makes sense. And you are not going to do that by saying, dear reader, my opinion makes sense. No, <laughs> don't do that, okay? Um, restate the points that you've made in your introduction, okay? And offer up to them like an invitation to perhaps consider things from your side, okay? Does that make a little more sense instead of saying, you should see now that my opinion is the one that makes most sense. That might turn people off. Don't do that. And then also remember we talked about something called a mic drop moment and you guys would come up with so many good things. This is like this is like the conclusions version of a hook. The hook was the first sentence right out the gate in an introduction that grabbed the reader's attention. The mic drop moment sentence is the final sentence of your entire conclusion that leaves your reader going, <gasps> Like that's a whoa moment. Maybe you want to leave them with like a final thought or like a challenge to like see or try things um, differently in terms of how they viewed this argument in the first place if they're on the other side. Remember, you're kind of wanting them to see your opinion. Um, you want it to be strong. Do not end or include anywhere in your conclusion of, well, that is my essay and now you have read about. No, <laughs> we would never do that together in class. Don't do that now, okay? Um, Oh, oh my goodness. Next page. This doesn't have to do with the essay. I just want to remind you, there is a little quiz. It's a little debate quiz, okay? Please take this. Don't forget to do it. And don't forget about the constructed response questions at the bottom, okay? Um, anyway, I just wanted to jump that in. Your conclusion. Mic drop moment, okay? Make it exceptionally mic droppable, okay? Um, I want you guys to really, truly do your very best work. I also want to take this time to say, I understand 
and I know I've said this before, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I understand everything's felt weird lately and you're all coming up with your own routines and you're doing the very best that you can. And really at the end of the day, that's all anybody can or ever should ask of you is you're doing the best that you can. You're doing the best that you can in very exceptionally weird times, all right? Still push yourself to do your best work, all right? Put in all of your effort. Get a hold of me if you are feeling stuck. Ask me questions through Google Classroom. You and your mom or dad or whoever can call me. You guys have my number. Um, use your notes. Use your binders. You have like samples of when we did practice essays. Even from the compare contrast, that can help give you guys ideas of how you started off hooks or mic drop moments. Use your resources. Reach out to me if you need to. Really buckle down and put in a lot of really solid work on this. You guys are strong writers and you're strong writers and learners and students and just strong individuals in your own right. Doing school best you can in very weird times. All right, but so far you've been doing a really nice job and I appreciate so much the work that you have been putting in from all of your personal workspaces <laughs> from home, okay? So I can't wait to read what you write. Um, to reiterate, I have extended this due date to Monday the 27th if you need it. Some of you might be done for it to be due Friday, but like I said, I wanted to honor the fact that some people need these instructional videos because that has been shared with me that they're helpful and I want to honor that because you know what I was one of those learners too I just need to like hear something from my teacher about what I'm reading and for whatever reason that just helps click better okay so the fact that we are having all these technical difficulties is not your fault so I don't want to penalize you for that so the fact that this isn't going up until gosh I hope Wednesday knock on wood I'm not jinxing myself again you guys um it has been a struggle. I don't know why YouTube has decided to be my nemesis lately, but we're going to make it work. Um, just know that you have a couple extra days to complete this. Okay. Um, I love you to bits. Can't wait to read your reading and I miss you so much. Bye guys. Happy Earth Day.